Hey guys, Desolator Magic here, and let's take a quick trip back in time to May 7th, 2013, when this article was uh, written and posted by Bruce Richard, remember that name, um, on the Wizards official page, the uh, Daily MTG. I don't think it was called that, but it's under the archive right here, so, you know, whatever. So he says, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm a tournament, uh, tournament organizer, sorry, I can't talk today, and I'm doing this in one take. I love screen recording. It's so much fun. So he says, yeah, local store sponsors the tournaments, and then we hold them at the community library. So uh, the other big takeaway was the average age of the players was 12. So they focus on uh, kids that, you know, might be intimidated by playing against, like, college-age kids and, well, kids. <laughs> I'm 31. I can call them kids. As soon as it starts with the three, they're all kids to me, okay? <laughs> Even though I look like I'm about 16. But, uh... Yeah, this uh, this was like so unique that they're like, oh, look at this. Oh, and they're getting, you know, new customers for Wizards. I mean, I'm sure that wasn't the exact focus, but come on. So, um, yeah, it just goes to show, you know, oh, we teach people the game. What a wonderful thing. And then they read books because books are great. And, oh, this is just so wholesome. And there's Mr. Uh, Reed Richards himself. Just kidding. He's, he can't actually stretch his arms out. I hope I got that reference correct or people are going to tell me about it. Uh, then we got, oh, more, more little kids. Hey, look, little kids. Little kids play magic. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Super shout out to this kid's shirt. Honk if you're about to run me over. Yes. I don't even know if that's a reference to something. I love it. Uh, let's see. Also, I think I have those pants. Anyway, um, let's see. We got uh, more little kids. That's cool. I'm hungry. Okay, shout out to his shirt too. Is this just the cool shirt thing? He's got a, a portal shirt. This is the cool shirt library, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, it's, hey, look, even littler kids. Hey, look, another little kid. Hey, look, little kids. Hey, look, a little kid. Get slightly larger kids. <laughs> wow. Oh, God, that's Adele? Ugh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so they're just like, oh, look at this. Isn't this wonderful? Let's let's feature them. Yay. Oh, Dragon's Maze. <laughs> Dragon's Maze League going on right now. <laughs> that's great. So, um, yeah, he even uh, even has a feature of Bruce. Okay, let's jump over to a slightly different article. But first, isn't this wonderful? Wizards even went out of the way to feature this like, yes, this is great. Look how great this is. This should be the model of how you do things. Oh, if you know where I'm going with this one, if you're one of the dozens of people who sent me a link to this article, oh boy. Just FYI, this is about to get a little spicy because I am pissed about this. So if you don't like deliciously spicy uh, videos, you're on the wrong channel. And also this one's like extra super like habanero level spicy. Hey, look, it's Mr. Fantastic himself, Bruce Richards. <laughs> Richard. It is Reed Richards, isn't it? I didn't check in between recordings. Anyway, um, this is titled, it's on Cool Stuff Inc., by the way, Guilds of Ravnica, the pre-release that wasn't. By Bruce Richard, the guy who wrote the article in the first place and got it on Wizard's main website. So what do you think Wizard sees when they see these pictures? Because, oh, look, it's Little Kids in the Library. Hmm, looks familiar. Um, wh what do they see? Besides just they're, they're counting the number of white people and then judging them based on that um, and, and the number of uh, females. Um, although, you know, it's hard to tell if somebody's disabled, though, or if they're like some weird exotic religion. Um, <laughs> okay. Okay, that joke fell flat. Anyway... So what do they see now? Because five years ago, they saw it and thought, that's article worthy. Now they see WPN violation. Let's drop the hammer. So I don't know how this necessarily happened, but it's one of two ways. So, well, I should probably tell you what did happen. So here's, oh, look, kids playing and enjoying magic and learning stuff in a safe environment that's supervised. Yay. Oh, uh, let's see. Wow, 30 players would have been at the pre-release. Ouch. And he regularly holds them. Yeah, since 2013 and before. Uh, so he says, yeah, I went to my local card store. Uh, they're not going to say the name. <laughs> over eight years ago. Okay, so yeah, well over five years. And he said, I want to be the TO for your store, but the store is too small to hold uh, magic tournaments. <laughs> Gee, I've been there, you know, my store. That's literally why I'm not a WPM location is because we do not have the seating room. And also... 90% of what I do in a day is not related to magic. It's kind of a dual purpose store. But anyway, um, yeah, there's not much they could do. So they, let me, let me just cut to the chase here. They're like, let's hold it at the library. And they're like, okay, cool. So they got the library's permission or whatever. So the official play area for the store is the library, basically. Um, and they've been doing this for eight years, no problems, okay? Um, and he said, yeah, we got to cap it at 36, but it's typically 30. So it's like 
very successful, very consistent. He goes on to say, like, you know, the parents wouldn't want to drop them off at another store in the city because um, it's like the bad part of town and there's like, you know, 20, 30, 40 year olds and who knows. And then, you know, there's just like one or two staff members running the event and are your kids even going to be safe? And honestly, the the parents would probably just have to stay there with their kids because they said they have kids as young as seven and the average age was 13. So yeah, (laughs) I I wouldn't drop my kid off at some random place with a bunch of random creepy looking magic players. Uh, (laughs) No offense, all you out there look creepy. Um, So yeah, he's like, this is perfect because they know it's the library, it's staffed, it's safe. And uh, I, I don't think they exclude people above 18, which is also, by the way, a WPN violation, but they just don't have those types of people show up. I mean, I wouldn't want to play there because, I mean, I, I, you know, no offense, but I think I'm a lot better than those kids are, and I'd probably win every tournament. <laughs> like, it would be a riot because kids are hilarious, but um, they also don't know the rules very well, and I find that deeply frustrating. So this is like the little kid place to play, and that's, that's wonderful. I don't have a problem with that, actually. Neither does Wizards, by the way. They actually have the opposite rule. You cannot put a age restriction on events unless it's serving alcohol they just revised that um so yeah what happened was uh, he got an email right here that says uh your store's wpn account is deactivated due to not having a dedicated play space available for 12 players and not having the space to create one wpn standards require a dedicated play space for 12 players kind regards so and then the the douchebag who sent this so either somebody got pissed off at them for some reason probably because they were losing or got caught cheating or something and reported them and said hey this is sponsored by this store and they don't actually have a play area. They'd have to be like familiar with WPN policy and how to report it. That's just odd. So did they get some kind of weird API access to a real estate database that says, Hey, this store holds 30 to 36 player pre-releases consistently and it's 800 square feet or something. That seems odd. And then they looked into it or I, I don't know what tipped them off. I mean, are they making everybody re-verify? But this is specific. This is exactly like, Hey, it's deactivated due to this right here. So, Oh, I'd love to know what happened here. So um, he says, yeah, we were surprised to lose our status over this. Yeah, think, because they featured you. So he wrote, and I'm just going to burn through this probably poorly and pronounce everything wrong. Um, I'm Bruce Richard, the TO for our store. Uh, I'm writing to appeal the deactivation of our store's WPN account. The reason the store doesn't have a dedicated play space is not for lack of effort, but simply due to the size restrictions of the store itself. The space between the glass display cases is barely six feet. Even removing all the glass cases on one side of the store would not create a space big enough for 12 players to play Magic. I know exactly where he is. Literally, the glass cases at my store are the reason that we don't have enough room. So, yeah, I can identify with that. Uh, So, in fact, it was for this reason that I initially approached the owner and asked him to sponsor our magic group at the library. So, it was an existing group, then they made it official. That's how they did it. So, at that time, we were told we could no longer run pre-releases without a store to sponsor us. The owner owned the closest store, and the only store in uh, Newton, I can't believe you said that, uh, that sells magic cards. But the store isn't big enough for tournaments. The owner sponsored our tournaments, and in return became eligible for all the products only WPN stores can get. So, you can see, this is a little sketch of an agreement but like so what like okay i could name a whole bunch of just blatantly fake wpn locations places that run fake events places that aren't even open to the public places just as mtg lion places that are lawyers offices or hardware stores that's a little strange i mean maybe they could find that if they're going through counting chairs and crap they could be like hmm this is a dental office or whatever i've heard all kinds of stories Something seems fishy. Let's maybe look into that instead of this, especially since they featured them on their own damn website as the the example of what to do. Are you kidding me? So, uh, yeah, at that time we were told we could no longer without, oh yeah, we could no longer run pre-releases without a store to sponsor us. And that's the thing. I think they do have like a store sponsorship program where it doesn't have to be on site. I mean, he keeps using that term and I think I've read that somewhere. I might be way off. So... That really doesn't make sense. I've heard of stores using like bowling alleys as their location for FNM, but then the store is off site and I don't think that's not allowed. So I honestly think this WPN thing was a mistake. I really do. Other than maybe, oh, it's a library. It's not a store. Well, would you really call a bowling alley a store? I mean, this is all just a load of crap to me, but it gets worse. So the store isn't big enough for our tournaments. The owner sponsored tournaments in return became... Oh, wait, I already read that. Holy crap. <laughs> or, or he wrote it twice. I don't remember. Who knows? I had a lot of caffeine. 
Uh, let's see. Yeah, while our situation is different than many other locations, it has worked out wonderfully here. See, eight years of running successful, safe, no complaint, no problem tournaments. That should by itself just make wizards piss off and just be like, oh, okay, we made a mistake, whatever. Yeah, it's offsite. You play offsite. Okay, whatever. A little bit unique, barely a violation if it even is. So, um... Oh, this is the best part. He literally tells them, I wrote about our pre-releases for Trick and Blake on the Mothership. Uh, see the links below to see some of the articles that went up on Wizard's own site. So he's basically like politely saying, you guys featured us and what we're doing. Clearly you approve of it. Are you kidding me? And there was a whole bunch of different articles about them over the years. So he goes on to say, the reason it is so important to the owner and I that we keep the WPN status is for the pre-releases. Most of the children who attend would not be permitted to attend pre-releases otherwise, for basically the reasons that I said before. You know, it's the parents would have to chaperone them and nobody wants to sit there and watch their kids play magic for like four hours or six hours or whatever. <laughs> Um, he says, you know, the other stores are in questionable neighborhoods. Um, and the, it's just an odd thing to have them versus in college people who are usually horribly inappropriate and drunk half the time. Uh, see, and they even say like, we're catering to teens or to older teens and, or no, they are catering, whatever. They run kids and the others don't. Yep. <laughs> That's a sentence that makes sense. So, uh, while we're trying to create a fun experience for even the youngest player who is 0-3, <laughs> see, even he thinks the younger players suck, uh, but still excited to win a pack in the final round of the pre-release. With our pre-release, over half of the players who attend our events simply will not be attending any pre-release. I bet it's well over half. Uh, the all-volunteer staff at the library, God, they're not even getting paid to do this! Wizards! What the actual hell is wrong with you? Or WPN customer support, I should say, because I doubt it's Mark Rosewater reading this. Although, <laughs> somebody at Wizards read this. Spoiler alert about the ending of how this one ends. So, um, I, I think they disqualified them just because of this sentence right here. So, the all volunteer staff at the library it is a community-supported library. Love the tournaments as it is one of the only ways they're able to get young boys into the library or around books. Oh, I'm sorry. You said boys, not a general new... Ge gender Gendral, yes, a gendral neutral pro pronoun. Basically, they didn't say girls, and there was no girls in the photo, so they're just like, ah, too many white people, too many boys. Nope, bye-bye. New customers, we don't need customers, we need token minorities and females. Yay. I don't know, maybe one of the kids was trans, we don't know that. Uh, let's see. I just assumed all their genders. Well, he said it. He said he said it right there. Anyway, um, I understand the store doesn't meet the new standards. It's not new. They didn't change anything other than alcohol. So unless you're serving alcohol, no, they didn't change anything. But I'm confident the intent of the standards isn't to shut down a thriving magic community of young players. Oh, you're wrong there. Sorry, that is their intent, and they do. Um, <laughs> I have almost 200 email addresses in my mailing list that I send out before each pre-release. The children enjoy the weekly events, but the pre-releases are the special events. Oh my god! So, yeah, they get super amped about it because pre-release is, is totally dank, and uh, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, he didn't actually say that. Please reactivate our WPN account so we can bring the Guilds of Ravnica pre-release and future pre-releases to these young players! Exclamation mark. You know, you know this from evidence of watching my channel that Wizards of the Coast freaking loves! Exclamation mark. So that should have hooked them right there. That should have made up for the fact that they openly admitted there's no girls there. But girls have cooties, so that so in their defense, I'm throwing that one out there, the cootie defense. It, it holds up in court all the time. So if you have any questions or concerns, please don't hesitate to contact me. Best wish, which is uh, Mr. Fantastic. I shouldn't say that. That's like Matt Lothar's, uh nickname, allegedly, or something like that. So <laughs> it's a Reed Richards reference. God, I hope I'm getting that name wrong. I'm still too lazy to look it up. Fantastic for stretchy guy. Um, so anyway, uh, I know that some friends, yes, he knows friends, that's how he got on their website, Inside Wizards of the Coast, offered their support, vouching for me and what I was doing at the library. All of this fell on deaf form emails. <laughs> Ears might be a little generous. Uh, here's the reply. To be upfront, we will not be re reactivating your store's WPN account. So just right off the bat, hey, feel free to not read the rest of this because fuck you. <laughs> They actually should have made that the first sentence. Just, hey, I read your whole email, but piss off. <laughs> so if the store were able to have a dedicated play space that is suitable for at least 12 players, it's called the library. They do. And it's been working for eight years. They have a dedicated play space. I mean, 
you can't say, oh, well, it's also a library, so it's not dedicated. I mean, people play Monopoly at my store, okay? It's a dedicated gaming space that's shared with other things. If somebody wants to read a book, there you go. I mean, that's that's such bullshit. So WPN guidelines are aimed at enforcing standards that ensure consistency among the qualities that we feel are important to the player experience. That place looks super clean and like perfect. And I mean, it's just, it's yeah. Consistency. Oh no, it's a library. So what? Like who cares? I mean, some people own a store that's in like a commercial warehouse because the rent's cheap. Like get over it. You don't need consistency. I mean, the only consistency among gaming stores is that there's a lot of cheaters. They're usually dirty and they smell bad. Like what consistency, what high standard, what is it? A holiday in? Just, this is all just bullshit. This entire email is bullshit. So we cannot grant an exception. Let me just add, add the little subtext. Even though we featured you as how to do this and said, what a great job you're doing on multiple occasions in multiple articles on our own website that you wrote for us. <laughs> God, this, uh. Ugh. So anyway, given that your WPN membership rests with the business and not with your separate play location, I mean, okay, it's separate. What, like, how far away could it possibly be? I mean, th this is, oh no, it's not in the same building, so fuck you, even though it's been working for eight years and they've had no problems. Gotta be fucking kidding me. So, with there being a number of stores in the area outside your store, we suggest reaching out to others to consider sponsoring Imagine Group. So in other words, tell them to play there with all the drunk college students, homeless people, and... I mean, let's just say two of the other stores that I went to, you might get stabbed going to the McDonald's, okay? Like, if you go down the block, you you better watch your shit and bring multiple people. Or, like me, my multiple people is uh, the eight rounds in my gun. So, um, yeah, I get that. I don't think that's an option. He literally told them that that's not an option in the first email, which clearly they didn't completely read, consider, or believe. So, that way you have a chance of providing players with the same experience. Yeah, it's exactly the same. I mean, most, most local gaming stores look exactly like this. Oh, uh, it does a little preview? That's stupid. Wow, it's not even rendering that. Oh, that's so weird. Okay, anyway. Um, yeah, then he goes on to take a crap on split cards <laughs> and double-sided cards. <laughs> I love you, guy who wrote this. I, I, I've been calling him Reed Richards so long I forgot his actual name. Um, yeah. This, this needs to end. This is terrible. Look look how... Oh, no. It looks so much better now. Look at that. I, it's so much quieter. What the hell? Look, before, after. Happy, sad. Having a good time and learning and being educational, learning math. Sitting home, playing... What do kids do now? Fortnite. No, Minecraft. Both. At the same time. Dual monitors. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. Let's read the addendum. As a quick update, Wizards reached out to me. Here we go. Here's the key phrase. You ready for this? Pay attention, everybody. The same day this article went live, <laughs> so, which happens to be within a couple days of when people started spamming links of it to me on literally every platform. I don't even know how some of you have my contact information on some of those platforms, but everybody was like, hey, Des, oh my God, <laughs> make a video on this. So the second that this article got viral as holy crap on the internet and everybody started posting on social media and Wizards PR department went, oh, somebody's taking a dump on us and it's not just the normal, oh, card quality where they've openly decided to just ignore the problem. This is actually Wizards fucking up on a massive scale. Like this makes them look so much like they're in the wrong and like the bad guy, the villain in the situation. They, they reached out to him the same day the article went live. Oh my God. <laughs> they have offered to send product to make a tournament happen for the children at the library. Now see, once? Or like, I mean, he doesn't say they reinstated the WPN thing. They're just like, oh shit, ship them some pre-release packs. My God. Which by the way, they're not that hard to get. I've got a case of them coming and I'm not a WPN status place. Let's just leave it at that. So um, they have also offered to help facilitate getting together a new store. What not that what they told you to do the first time? Okay, move all your kids to the sketch-ass homeless side of town where they might get kidnapped. Have fun. What are they? Okay, here's how you would help facilitate that. Four armed guards. <laughs> how about that? You feel, you feel good about that one, Wizards? Because that seems more expensive. I think for the cost of four armed guards for a year, you could probably just build a building. Uh, one of the difficulties in working with WPN stores is that allotments are based on previous release numbers. See, that's the other thing. You can't just tell them, 
Um, we're going to go to this store. They're a brand new WPN location. We just got a WPN account with them, or this was, you know, they usually hold pre-releases with six people or whatever, and we need 36 packs. They will not let you do that. The, your allocation is your allocation. It, you can't just say, I want to order 80 because I think we'll get that many, and if we don't, it's our problem to get rid of them. No, there's only so many to go around, first of all, and secondly, Wizards apparently doesn't like money, which I have evidence to the contrary, but okay. So, um, yeah, he says, if a store were suddenly to offer another pre-release and request 36 more pre-release packs, which they get 30 to 36 kids, it is what it is, WPN would, ha would give a handful of packs, which would mean that their store would be very limited uh, if I was to get 36, which, yeah, I think you order them in packs of 36. I thought it was 20, but whatever. Actually, I'm pretty sure it's 20. I don't know. Whatever. Who cares? So WPN has offered to help with the allotments so everyone gets all the pre-release packs they need. How about you just reinstate his location? Like, you're really being dicks about this. They're like, we're going to do everything we can to make sure that you can still run some semblance of an event somewhere, but fuck your library. I hope it burns down. Like, what the hell? Like, seriously, wizards, seriously, just reinstate the damn library. You know what? Why don't they just open a little teeny tiny little, little six foot foldable card table pun intended, that sells like six magic cards. Like you can buy it. They sell literally nothing but basic lands. Boom. Now the library is a store. Fuck you wizards. It just happens to be a store with a lot of books. I mean, it's, it's, it's basically a comic book store. There you go. You happy now? Would that make you happy? And then they could be their own damn store. I mean, this is such bullshit. Like I said, eight fucking years of this and they didn't have a problem. It was working perfectly. Yeah, they slightly sort of got around the WPN things, but there's not an actual problem. Here is an actual problem. There are YouTubers out there not even going to name their names because they disgust me and I've already turned them into wizards, but we didn't have enough information on who they really are and where they really live to actually bust them, according to the investigation team, which is very happy that I turned them in. Oh, if anybody does know who I'm talking about and knows who they are, I will give you a massive, massive reward financially for his information, okay? You know damn well who I'm talking about. I'm pretty sure I know what state he lives in, too, if you want to narrow it down a little bit. But I think, I think people, like, would people turn him in for a bounty? Yes. I think that nobody respects this douchebag at all, and they will turn on him for money. That's what I'm counting on. So anyway... Uh, he just, his friend used to run a, uh, WPM location and then he retired and closed the store, sort of, I guess. I don't know. And well, either way, it's not, it's not live anymore. So he gets in WPM allocations and then the dude just opens them up on his YouTube channel, makes inappropriate jokes about it. And ha ha ha, I'm, I'm violating WPM policy. Oh, I'm so edgy. Look at me. And then he sells them for profit on, on, uh, eBay, which by the way is 100% illegal. That is a violation of a, a, a contract bare minimum. So if you want to count that as the law, I'm sure it's not, oh no, it kind of is theft actually. Because you signed a contract saying, I will give these out for free to the standard showdown players, and then you sold them. Like, that is that is theft according to the terms of the agreement. So, maybe they should find and shut down those. Or you know how, how um, um, Rudy ended up getting like 150 of that garbage, what, what was that stupid thing that nobody wanted that sold for like $78 and he bought them because he's an idiot who doesn't understand how magic works? Um... Wherever he got those from, whatever fake WPN place sold him 150 of a specialized, uh, like old reprint set. I, I can't remember what the hell it was. Oh, the, the plain chase anthology. Yeah. That one. Um, whoever got 150 for, of them for him, that is against WPN policy as well. It says you cannot buy them with intent to directly resell to another reseller or another location or a store that isn't part of the WPN network, but that's exactly what they did. And the rumor is the reason that Rudy opened a store is because he got caught and they said, you're not doing this anymore. And they pulled the WPN status from, uh, whoever was, you know, doing this for him basically. So that's the rumor, not confirmed, just a rumor. And the, my other evidence is in a video, Rudy said that he will never, ever, ever open a store ever. And then he did. What a coincidence. I don't know how the hell that store is a WPN location. Maybe it isn't. Maybe this is all wrong, but I don't know. He's very secretive about it, but either way you got to bust those people. And you know what? Go after, what, like Channel Fireball and Card Kingdom? Don't they sell a whole bunch of WPN crap? Where the hell are they getting it from? I mean, I know that Card Kingdom technically runs a local gaming store, but you also know damn well that they're putting X percent of what they order on the internet. I don't know if they still do that anymore. I might not even have the names of the companies right, just FYI. But these are all examples. 
So there are really, really messed up fake WPN locations and people abusing their WPNs and individual stores filing for two WPN accounts and then getting double allocated and just all this crap that they don't care about because at the end of the day, it's product and they get money for it. They don't really care that people are bending the rules. Oh, except a library full of little kids. No, screw that. We got it. We got to do it. I'm surprised they didn't get their little stealth wizards of the coast helicopter to drop hellfire missiles on the library and burn it straight to ash. I mean, that's the way they're acting with this. Like we are completely, our hands are tied, but to save face, we're going to send you some product one time and tell your kids to go to the shitty side of town to go to another pre-release. Oh, look at us. We're so helpful. And they're doing it only after they got caught and it was a PR nightmare. So that's why I'm making this video because this is complete bullshit. Oh, and by the way, special extra fuck you to this Charles Manson looking motherfucker, Jason Dyer, uh, not doxing him. He put it out here. His it's a public comment. Uh, let's see. Get over yourselves. That's that's all. That's all one word, by the way. Uh, there are rules for a reason. WHO, the World Health Organization, has liability of these children. People. What, God, that's got to be an SJW term. This guy's not mentally stable, obviously. At your event, is it the library? Is it you? Is it WPN? I don't even know where he's going with this. But basically, he's like, "Fuck you. The rules are the rules. Your kids suck. Shut it down." And everybody's like. Oh, 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 nope. Get him, Cody. Fuck yeah. Hey, Cody, d get, contact me. I'll send you a signed card just for that comment. You're fucking awesome. And and this guy looks like uh, Michael from Vsauce. He's he's pretty dank, too. Uh, so anyway, um, yeah, this, this whole situation really pisses me off. I mean, the person reading it should have been like, oh, shit, he literally wrote articles for our website, and this has been going on for eight years. Let's, let's just undo this before it becomes a PR nightmare. But when has Wizards ever avoided PR nightmares? So yeah, this whole situation is such complete aggravating bullshit. And it's, I, I would get it if this was the only one that was like shut down and that was the end of it. And it's like, okay, technically he technically broke the rules. If they want to be dicks about it, okay, whatever. But with all the fake WPN people out there, the WPN abusers, just people who break street dates on stuff. It's it, there's so many people they could go after other than Bruce freaking Richard. I mean, this is ridiculous that this is what they would choose to crack down on. So my only hope is that they get even more pressure and just say, fuck it, have your WPN account back. Or, um, this is part of a huge crackdown and he just got caught up in it. It wasn't just one person, you know, looking into it. They're checking all the WPN locations to make sure that all of them are legit and maybe 500 other fake ones got shut down. I actually am somewhat sure that my local store had to re-verify their stuff with pictures and videos too. Cause all of a sudden F and M randomly, they took pictures in a video. They're just like, we're taking a video and everybody's like, hi F and M. Whoa. You know, maybe it was for Facebook. It was just a promotional thing to show how many people are there and how successful they are, but it might've been a re-verification. So maybe like literally everybody's getting re-verified. I, I don't know. I mean, if this was targeted, Oh my God, like that would make this 10 times worse. So, Oh, sucks for you, Bruce. If I were you, I would just outright sue wizards for some kind of implied consent, breach of contract, that kind of thing. I wish they were in California because you could nail them to the wall with their version of that law. But they're in Seattle. They might have something similar. I mean, I guarantee if you kickstarted the legal funds, uh, uh, you'd probably have about a half million dollars by tomorrow because people don't like wizards of the coast. Yeah. Don't know if you know what said or not. So, um, yeah, that's about all I got to say about this wonderful situation. If there's any updates, I will update you on it. So thanks to everybody who sent this to me, and I will see you guys next Wizards of the Coast PR disaster, which last time I said that, it was literally four hours later.